Hello, I'm Steve Maskery and welcome to a very chilly Workshop Essentials. It's now time to cut the tenons on the ends of my short rails and to do that I'm going to use the ultimate table saw tenon jig. Now this is my table saw tenon jig and I've got an, an equivalent one for the bandsaw as well. And I uh, made this about 10 years ago and published the plans on Workshop Essentials number three, I think, which you can get from workshopessentials.com. Advert over. This is the best in the world. And I do know that that sounds arrogant, but it's perfectly possible to be arrogant and right at the same time. The reason I think it's so good is that it's got four qualities which I've not seen in any other tenon jig altogether. The first is it's accurate. Well, lots of tenon jigs are accurate, I'll grant you that. Secondly, it's fast to operate. To cut a tenon, there are just two moves. First cut, second cut. And it really is as fast as that. I do know of one other tenon jig which is as fast as that to operate. It's also fast to set up, and this is where most tenon jigs fall short, I think. Um, it has to be calibrated for the blade. That bit of setup takes about a minute, a minute and a half if you're, if you're leisurely, and then it never has to be done again. And I don't have to do any setup for the tenon itself because this spacer determines the width of the tenon, the thickness of the tenon. And as long as this fits the mortise, like that, then the tenon will fit the mortise exactly the same. I may want to do a test cut to check that the tenon is in the right place within the thickness of the workpiece because I've got some uh, fine adjustment over here. If it's not quite in the right place, if I'm looking for a flush face frame, for example, and the tenon's not in quite the right place and I've got a step, then I can adjust this 0.1 millimetres precision, no problem at all. So I might need to do a test cut for that, but I don't need to do any test cuts for the actual thickness of the tenon. So that's the third thing, it's quick to set up. And the last thing is, it is guarded. The guarding is pretty good, actually, and most tenon jigs have zero guarding. So there are three guards of this system. I've got a guard at the back here, so that when this is furthest forward, my hand can't accidentally make contact with the blade here. When it's right back here, and I'm changing the workpiece, then I can't accidentally uh, scuff my knuckles because there's a guard there. And I can't get my hands in at the side because I'm using a standalone guard, which I'll show you in a minute. So if you've got another jig which does those four things well and is better in some respect, then please, please tell me because I want to know about it. But until then, this is the ultimate table saw tenon jig. So um, there are four cuts to make because we're doing a, a, a double tenon. And the four cuts are the two sides of this tenon and the two sides of that tenon. And this is so precise that, um, well, I'll show you how it fits. Like that. So we have a, a spacer for the thickness of the tenon, and I'm also going to use the same 25 millimeter spacer that I used for the mortises. And that moves the whole thing over by the pitch of the tenons, like we did for the pitch of the mortises over here. So we start with the jig closed, and my workpiece. Oh, we'll do this. We'll do the other end of this one. The workpiece. Uh, I've got a face mark. So that goes against the jig, like that. And then this guard gets put into place, like that. We don't need that anymore. And my standalone guard is magnetic, so we just have to make sure there's no rubbish on the table. And then that doesn't move. 
Right, I think we're ready to go. Uh, where are my ears? Here we are. Four cuts. Two spacers are used both separately and together to give me four accurate and precise cutting positions. The jig itself has a curved compensation stop built into it so that I am not restricted to using one particular blade, although I do use this blade pretty much all the time with this jig. It's a 24 tooth flat top grind rip blade and it gives me a very clean finish. So now I need to clear out the waste in between the tenons and cut the shoulders and, uh, and then, it, then it will fit. And I do that with a different blade on the saw. I do have to be careful here not to get carried away. The wide shoulders are all the same, but the narrow shoulders on the tops and bottoms of the rails are deeper. On the other hand, the tops of the top rail have no shoulder at all. Instead, I cut haunches, which I'm afraid I did on the bandsaw while you weren't looking. The bench top is going to be screwed down from below with some pretty hefty coach screws. It's much easier to drill for these now rather than after assembly. There are two coach screws through each rail. The one nearest the front goes through a hole the same size as a screw so that the front of the top and the front of the legs remain flush. But the rearmost one needs to be able to allow the bench top to move so its hole needs to be oversized, or, as in this case, a short slot. Again, you don't need a domino in order to do this, but it sure does speed things up. Then, after chamfering the edges, we can start to think about drawboring the tenons. Ah, yes the drawboard tenons. I wasn't going to bother pegging the tenons because they don't need it, it's a lot of work uh, and it's plenty strong enough without. There's a massive surface area for gluing, over a square foot in total in the, in the, in the frame. And, um, but I've been sort of shamed into doing it by some of my online woodworking friends. So uh, I'm going to peg them. A peg tenon is when there are holes in the uh, in the leg, in the, in the mortises, through the sides of the mortise. And in this case, there's two. There's one on this side, and there's one on this side. And they're slightly out of line, so they don't foul each other. So when the pegs are in, one will be in like that, and one will be in like that. There's about 10 millimetres between them. There will be corresponding holes in the tenon cheeks, here and here. But they're not exactly in line. The holes in the tenon cheeks are going to be about two millimetres closer to the shoulder than they would be if they were perfectly in line. And that way, when the dowel goes through, it sort of wiggles its way through 
and pulls the, the two pieces very tightly together. So these have to be something fairly strong. These are made in oak, and they do take a bashing. So how do we get these holes in exactly the right place? Well, well first of all, we assemble the frame dry. So we have that assembled dry, and you can see already it's really uh, very nicely tight uh, at the shoulders on both sides. I mean, it's great. So now we take our drill that we use to make these holes and poke it in there and just give it a tap. And the same on the other side. And now we take it apart and see where those marks are. Flipping act, he didn't want to come out, I can tell you. Four. Right. Let's put those down for a minute. I've now got some tenon cheeks with a little tiny pinpoint on. And if I drill at that, the holes will all be in line. So we need the drill again. Where did that go? And we're going to drill through about two millimeters closer to the shoulder than it would be otherwise. And I'm just going to fill the gap between the tenons temporarily so that I don't get any spelching on the inside. That's about there, we'll do nicely. About two millimeters. That's all that's required. And now I've got a pair of holes that are slightly offset from each other like that. I've just got to do that on all the, all the others. Right, now we've got to get it back together again with the glue on. Now, I'm not going to do a proper running commentary while I'm gluing. It's just too complicated. You've got to be fast, and I haven't got time to, to present properly at the same time as I'm gluing. I'll leave the camera running so you can watch, but um, you'll just have to... Make do with some, I don't know, some nice music. Or go make a cup of tea or something, I don't mind. I'll be back as soon as I've got this glued up. those. Now unfortunately with this glue you have to put glue on both surfaces so I've got to do the same with the legs now. I would have preferred to have used um, something like cascomite because of its long open time but there are problems with cascomite at the moment. Everybody's complaining about it. Uh, they've changed the formulation for some reason and it doesn't mix properly and it doesn't set properly and people are complaining left right and centre. So um, this is a uh, resin, um, what does it say, hybrid resin, so there we go, whatever that is. Cool, what a mess you made there, Steve. Right, so let's see about getting this put together. Ooh. Oh, I didn't label them. I didn't label them. 
Ah, oh, no! Which one goes where? It's too late now, Steve. It's too late now. That one I've done over there is all properly labelled. Right, OK, let's see if we can work this out. We can work this out, actually, because these are labelled. Right, front left. Front left, and that's the front because of that. Right, OK, because of these. Oh, that was close. Now, what about this one? Is there a top and bottom? Yes, there is. Good. Ooh. <laughs> Disaster averted, I can tell you. I'd be worried for a minute. Now the dowels just need a chamfer putting on them so that they go in nicely. Let's start over here. It goes in easily to start with and then it finds the, the tenon cheek so that's you can tell from the noise that it's, it's found wood. So now we've got to hit it through that There we go, let's go in. And you, again, you can tell from the sound that it's, uh, it's got there. And I can see here, that what you can't at the moment, that it's hard up on that shoulder. Right, glue squeeze out all the way along. And I suppose I should check for square, although there's not very much I can do about it now if it's not. Bang on. Any squarer, and that'll be out. Right, well, I better clean the glue up and then when it's all set, trim off the dowels. But that is probably the most complex part of the build over. So next time I shall be making the rails, the stretchers that go between them. Until then, thank you for watching and enjoy your workshop. Cheerio.